right, let's see what we're doing with some more multiple choice questions. So let A be the event of eating all of your vegetables. Okay, so I have to eat all my vegetables, right? Parents always want us to eat all of our vegetables. What is A complement? So A complement means not eating all. All right. So again, imagine you're a kid and your parents want you to eat all of your vegetables. What is the complement of that? It's not eating all of them, which is different from saying you ate none of them. So I, I commonly get A is the is the guessed wrong answer. All right. So it's saying eating none. It's not. You are just not eating all. That's different than saying you are eating none. So if you don't eat all, all right, this is not the answer. All right. This is a possibility, there is at least one left, right? Eating some of your vegetables, I could see that being a, a commonly um, thought out answer. Eating only one of your vegetables, this is not it either, okay? So between these two, which one is more correct? All right, so if you don't eat all of your vegetables, let me make up a fake plate. Oops, plate, we'll have a circular plate. And let's say I had six little cauliflowers or broccolis or whatever you have. This kind of looks like a chocolate chip cookie, so this is not my best, my best broccoli dish. All right, if I was going to eat all, that would imply I ate six broccoli, six vegetables, okay? So if I do not eat all, right, we want the complement not eat all, That is saying you ate five, four, three, two, one, or zero vegetables, right? So again, if you had six pieces of veggies, right, six broccolis on your, on your plate, and you had to eat them all, that means you would have eaten six. The complement of that is eating not all, right? So five, four, three, two, one, or zero. All right. So it doesn't necessarily mean you ate some. Some to me implies that it's plural, right? Because you could have eaten zero, which is not some. You could have eaten one, two, three, four, or five. That is some. But again, let's think about there's at least one left. If you ate five vegetables, right, then there is one left. If you eat four vegetables, there is two left. Three vegetables, there is, oops, excuse me. Um, oh, we had six total, right? Three, four, five, or maybe all six. This is how many veggies are left, right? And how do we say one or more? We would say at least one vegetable left, okay? All right, so 18, the following Venn diagram uses the following definition. D equals people with dogs, C equals people with cats. What does the shaded region represent? All right, we got the left moon, right? So these people have dogs, but they do not have cats, right? Because they are not in the cat circle. So where is dogs with no cats? So people, dogs, people, dogs, and no cats. There it is, part B, okay? All right, moving along. We've got, let me move that up. So we've got, Restaurants in a town have their average price entree calculated. The sample space is, we got some category of inexpensive, moderate, and expensive. Which of the following represents a legitimate assignment of probabilities for this sample space? All right, so for terms of legitimate assignments, there's always the two rules, right? The sample space, the probability of your sample space has to total out to one, and then each individual probability of whatever your event is, I'll call it A, has to be a number between zero and one, right? Can't be larger than one, can't be smaller than zero. So let's take a look, I'll go in the opposite order. Let's look, at, uh, let's vet, uh, vet this one. So are all of my probabilities numbers between zero and one? Yes, I don't see anything in here over one and I don't see anything here that's negative. So that's not gonna help us in this case. But let's take a look at the probability of this sample space has to total out to one. So here I see 0.33 plus 0.33 plus 0.33. That's 0.99, okay, that's pretty close. I mean, there could be a round off error there. So I won't rule that one out just yet. So total 
0.99. It, again, it should total out to one, but sometimes there's round off errors. So let's see what our other options are. We've got 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.25. Ah, that one's exactly one. That is the one I want. Okay. And just to check the other ones, right? 0.4 plus 0.5 plus 0.2, that is 1.1. That's too much. And this one, you can see this totals out to three. That is way too much. Okay. So this would have been an okay answer if, um, if, if B hadn't presented itself. Again, sometimes when we add up relative frequencies, just to do a round off error, you can get um, totals of 0.999 or 1.001. Uh, again, that didn't happen. I didn't wind up choosing that answer because part B is there and it's a, it's a, better, it's a better answer. It's definitely the correct one. All right, so here we go. Number 20, I see a word problem. Let's do this. The probability that a family visits the city museum is 36%. The probability that you ride on the Three Rivers Ferry is 47%. And the probability that a family does both is 22%. Find the probability, when I can see I'm missing a period here, I'll fix that. Find the probability that the family uh, visits the museum or rides the ferry. So I see an or, okay. Now, this to me sounds like a Venn diagram problem, but believe it or not, you don't even have to write the Venn. I can write the Venn, but I want you to see that the way I gave you this information, asking you for the OR, all we gotta do is use the formula. So here's what I mean. If we use the OR formula, right, it's the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now I'm going to switch these letters out. I'm going to go ahead for, for my particular problem. I'm going to do um, museum and ferry. So I'll use M and F. So the probability of M or F equals the probability of M plus the probability of F minus the probability of M and F. So I'll write it that way. Um, and then look what happens. I, I gave you these three numbers, right? So the probability that you visit the city museum is 36%. The probability that you ride the ferry is 47%. The probability that you do both is 22%. Okay. I didn't actually highlight the both, but that's a, that's a good word to highlight also. All right. Um, and so then I could just crunch this expression on my calculator and we would do 0.36 plus 0.47 minus 0.22, and we should be arriving at 0.61. Okay, so that's a totally legit way to do this. It just happens that, yes, it sounds like a Venn diagram, but given the information I presented to you, you didn't need to write the Venn diagram. You could have just plugged it into the OR formula. Let me just show you what it would have looked like if you had run the Venn diagram, or trying to draw the Venn diagram. And it, it actually makes this problem a little bit more difficult if you try and do the Venn diagram just because of the way I presented information. So let me show you. Okay. All right, so if I was gonna do this, Let me go at museum or ferry. I always start with a football. So the football said that both was 0.22. Okay, fine. Now, museum, this entire circle has to be 36%. And I can't stress this enough. I always get students that just put the 0.36 there. Oops, you can't see all this. Let me scooch this up. If you just put the 0.36 there, you're gonna get these problems wrong. The entire circle adds up to 36%. And you already know where 22% of those folks are. So we're gonna take 0.366 and subtract from it 0.22 and find out that of these families, 14% were only going to the city museum, okay? On the flip of that, this entire ferry circle has to add up to 47%. So don't put the 47 here, that is incorrect. If the entire circle has to add up to 47%, we will take 0.47 and subtract out 0.22 to arrive at 0.25. Okay. 
So keep in mind that there are always four areas in this Venn diagram. There's this fourth one, the families that did neither. So let me see what that would be. And, and if these all have to add up to one, I will subtract these numbers from one to find this missing probability. So I will take one, I will subtract out 0.14, I will subtract out 0.22, and I will subtract out 0.25. Oops, wrote two negatives in there, there we go. So I've got 39% of my families did neither. Okay, now on the or, you can run this entire formula again. You could still do 36, 47, or 22, but the, the cool thing about Venn's, the or is always left moon, football, right moon. So watch what happens when I add these numbers up. I'll get 14, 22, 25, and there's my 61. Okay, so on the Venn, you have a different way of doing this. You can say M or F. You could just add the three parts of that Venn diagram together. And you could again get 61%. Hi guys, I'll catch you on the next example.